It's not enjoyable to think about, but if there was ever a radiological emergency, not having some kind of a working radiation detector essentially makes you absolutely blind. It's like walking around in pitch black without a flashlight knowing there's a monster out there. And I don't mean to be overly dramatic about it, but imagine if you were in a situation where you knew that there was a potential for radiation around you and you didn't have a radiation detector. How, you know, how crippling, how handicapping that would feel for yourself and your family. Now, there are all sorts of radiation detectors that are being sold online all over the place. I've bought a number of them and I finally put some to the test, put some to a real test and I found out that a lot of the radiation detectors that I have maybe aren't as reliable as I thought they were. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the test results of different radiation detectors and share with you which ones I feel work, which ones I trust my life with, and which ones don't really make the grade. If you wanna find out which are the junk radiation detectors before you buy them, stick around. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I'm going to be reviewing, discussing, testing, sharing the test results, that's the best way to put it, of four different Geiger counters and scintillators, essentially radiation detection devices. This is a critical item in any prepper's uh, arsenal if they are planning for any kind of radiological event, whether it is a, you know, some sort of a weapon or a nuclear power plant melting down or you know, coming close to melting down or any kind of situation involving radiation. It's critical to have some kind of a radiation detector because radiation is invisible. You can't see it. You can't smell it. You can touch it, but you wouldn't know that you're touching it. It's really critical to have a device that can tell you whether radiation is present in an environment or not, because without a device, the only way for you to really know is to go into the environment and then see if you developed horrible symptoms uh, later on. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think we want to all use ourselves as a, a personal biological litmus paper. So uh, in this video, I'm reviewing four different types of radiation detectors. They kind of span across different price ranges and they have different technologies in them. Uh, and uh, some of them are made, uh, you know, with a certain type of usefulness in mind, and some of them are, are kind of made in another direction. Uh, so with, I feel like it's a nice uh, wide uh, swath of options for you guys. I did testing on four different materials or situations. Uh, the first is uranium. We're testing all of them against uranium. We're testing all of them against potassium. Uh, both of those are um, alpha or beta emitters. I kind of forget. Um, offhand, but they're, they're not gamma ray emitters. Uh, we're testing them all against radium, which is a gamma ray emitter, and we're testing them against uh, background, which is really important. Whenever you're doing any kind of a scientific study, you need to have some kind of a control. So if you take a, a radiation detector and it's screaming that something is really super radioactive, it could be broken, and if you removed it away from the radioactive item and it's just in the middle of nowhere without any radiation, it could still be screaming. Uh, so it's important to always have a control group whenever you do a scientific experiment, unless you're trying to sway the experiment to prove some sort of a hypothesis that you want proven, but you don't really care whether it's true or not. In that case, it's a good idea to not control, <laughs> add a control group into your experiments. But if you want truth, if you want reality, if you want honesty, control group is super important, critical uh, part of science. So we are testing them uh, four different testers against four different environments. So uh, let's go through the different testers that I'm going to be uh, sharing with you guys first. Uh, first one, this is something that is probably familiar to a lot of people, at least the, the design of it. This is made by Better Geiger. Uh, they specialize or at least purport to specialize in radiation detectors that are uh, useful in emergency sorts of situations. A detector like this is not tuned to be picking up a lot of alpha and beta radiation. Uh, and the reason for that is because those types of radiation, as long as they're not inside of your body, are not particularly dangerous. Uh, you know, any radiation is not good to be around, but alpha and beta radiation, it's not really going to make it much through your skin uh, if it's not on the inside of you. Now, if you have it in contaminated food and you eat the contaminated food and then you have the alpha and beta emitting radiation inside your body, then that becomes a problem. And in that case, it actually would be a good idea to have a radiation detector that can detect those type of things. So you can detect the contamination on materials. Uh, and I'm already kind of getting into the review part of it. Uh, but the 
the reason that this thing was de designed is to pick up gamma radiation if you're in a heavily irradiated environment with ga gamma radiation. That's what this one is designed for. And it's again made by bettergeiger.com. Okay, that's number one. Uh, the next one is kind of on the other end of the spectrum. This is a laboratory uh, unit. This is something that you would use in a lab setting. It has a uh, wipe test plate on it where you can uh, put some kind of uh, material, uh, like a powder or something, and then slide it in underneath the uh, detector area, which you can see here right in the back. And this is uh, designed to be a very accurate device that you can use under laboratory settings to be very sensitive and pick up all sorts of radiation, whether it's gamma radiation, alpha, or beta. Uh, so this is number two on the list. Uh, the next two are kind of, th these are the kind of things you see popping up a lot on Amazon. In fact, that's where I bought these next two units. Uh, the first one's this really, really tiny, light little one. Uh, this is made by uh, Radax. Uh, uh, this is their Quarta model. Uh, this, I believe, is a scintillator. And um, I guess all, all I would say about this is it's very tiny, it's very lightweight, as you can you know, demo, demoing the lightweight, it's like, there's no struggle in lifting this one up. Uh, uh, you know, th those are some, kind of the selling points on uh, this particular unit. So there we go with that one. And the fourth uh, unit is made by GQ. This is the GMC 500 plus. Uh, this, uh, I guess what's unique about this is while all of the other units use uh, AA or AAA batteries, which are uh, pretty easy to source. This one uses an 18650 battery, which are, I guess, getting pretty easy to source uh, at this point as well. But one thing that's kind of interesting about this unit, it has a lot of menu functions. You can charge the battery directly in the unit. Uh, it's got a little charging port right on the side. And I think that's kind of handy because you can leave this one perpetually on and plugged in, and it's not like you have enough flop uh, batteries uh, through it. So that's kind of a neat selling point of this one. So those are the four different units that we uh, are gonna be talking about today. And I mentioned I was uh, uh, testing them against uh, four different environments. Uh, the first one was the last one I mentioned earlier, which is just background radiation. It's the radiation that's just in the environment here where I am. Now, different areas on Earth, there are gonna be different types of background radiation. If you're at a higher elevation, you have less uh, shielding in the sky over you, uh, so more uh, uh, interstellar, like cosmic radiation, uh, solar radiation, I guess, can be hitting you uh, if you're at higher elevations. Uh, there are certain areas where the rocks emit more radiation, like uranium, for example. It can be uranium ore, uh, you know, just in the landscape. So there are some places uh, that just have a lot more radiation for, for that reason. So background radiation is kind of different in different places. It's not one fixed, unique uh, number for everywhere in the universe, uh, but, you know, in whatever uh, location you're in, there's kind of a general fixed kind of background radiation, which can go up or down depending on you know, uh, different scenarios. Uh, the next thing that uh, we tested was potassium, and I was testing it in the form of this, uh, what is this, potassium chloride. Uh, it's a called a salt substitute. Uh, when I did the testing, I did the testing with the salt substitute, the potassium, inside of this paper sleeve here. Uh, I mentioned that alpha and beta radiation get uh, stopped pretty easily by your skin. Uh, it, even like just a piece of paper, if you put a piece of paper up between you and an alpha emitter, it's gonna uh, absorb and block a lot of that radiation. Um, so I did the testing through uh, the, the paper here, which is, you know, kind of a way of just sort of reducing it a little bit and seeing what like the actual uh, impact, you know, subdermis would be. I kind of figured the outside layer of this paper would kind of act like your, your outer layer of skin. And I was seeing kind of what would get past that and what would get registered on the inside of your body. So that's the next thing that I tested, uh, followed by uranium. And the uranium I was testing is on this little card here. I bought this, this is just a uranium ore that is uh, uh, smeared onto the back of this card. It's got all these radiation symbols and warnings on it. Uh, but uranium, uh, despite its reputation for like, you know, nuclear power and like all the melt meltdowns that are associated with that, uranium is just, I forget, I, I gotta get it in my head. It's, it's either an alpha or a beta uh, emitter, but it does not emit much in the way of gamma radiation. So, uh, you know, this being held up right in front of me, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna like put it on a pillow and sleep next to it or anything like that, but this is not a particular danger to me because just alpha and beta radiation. But that said, I'm I'm gonna put it back under this rock over here. Uh, and the rock is shielding me from the last thing that I'm, uh, I ran a test with all of these uh, under, and that is 
Yeah. Here's the rock. I drilled a hole in the top of the rock. And inside the hole, I'm just going to hold this very briefly, is a watch hand painted in radium, uh, which is the way they used to get these little antique watch hands to glow. And this is emitting, this is emitting a fair bit of alpha and beta radiation and gamma radiation. I'm going to put it back in the rock so it's shooting out like a laser of radiation out of the top there. And as long as I don't point that hole at me, I should be pretty good. So those are the four different environments that I use to test against these things. So to start off, what I'd like to do is go through all the different environments and tell you how each of these different units performed. The unit of measurement that we're going to be using for all of these tests is micro sieverts per hour. Uh, that is a rate of radiation that is emitted, you know, as you can hear in the per hour, like miles per hour. Uh, and and a, a micro sievert is one millionth of a sievert. A sievert is a type of measurement of radiation that takes into account uh, biological impact from that radiation. Uh, it's kind of a mix of how many raw counts per minute of radiation clicks are coming off of something uh, combined with the type of radiation that uh, you know, is being measured. So it is kind of a, a measure statement of biological impact. So that's what the measurement that we're going to be going with is the micro sievert per hour. Hour, and this is what each of these units registered. So let's start with the radix and background radiation. When I used the radix to measure background radiation, it picked up 0.1 microsieverts per hour, which is considered normal background radiation from my area. So it was able to effectively measure that. Next unit uh, is the, the GQ GMC 500 plus. This one also picked up 0.1 uh, microsieverts per hour for background radiation. So it effectively was able to measure what was allegedly there, according to my, to my research. Uh, next unit, the inspector. Uh, the IMI inspector picked up 0.3 microsieverts per hour as background radiation. I'm not sure what accounts for that, um, but <laughs> that was a result that I got, is 0.3 microsieverts per hour using the inspector. Again, 0.3 is still considered in the safe zone. You know, that's not a, uh, a reading to, you know, to cause any kind of alarm, but that's where this one started, was 0.3 for background radiation. Next unit on the list was 0.1 that I received from the better geigercounter.com uh, uh, Geiger counter, which I think it, I think this they call them Geiger counter, uh, but I think this is actually a scintillator. Uh, I may be wrong on that, but uh, this one uh, had a reading of 0.1. Uh, and actually, I'm I'm rounding to the nearest tenth here. Uh, this one actually had 0 0.06, whereas some of the others had 0 0.09. So this one actually was registering even a little bit less than some of the others, and I, I'm just round, rounding to the nearest tenth. This one uh, had an average of just around uh, 0.1, and again, you know, that's considered normal background radiation. So for normal background radiation, they all seem to pick up a unit uh, of measurement that is, you know, plausible. They, they, they all sounded reasonable. So uh, next on the list, let's go to the, uh, let's go to the the potassium, the salt substitute here. Uh, where did everybody fall on that? So uh, starting with the radix, when I uh, use the radix to measure the potassium, again, potassium inside of the tube, so it has a little bit of shielding in the paper tube, uh, that was picking up uh, just about 0.2 uh, microsieverts per hour. So about double background radiation was what the radix was picking up. Uh, that's, per my research, that sounds about right. Uh, uh, next unit that I used for testing that was the uh, GQ uh, GMC 500 plus, and I was getting just about 0.2 with this one as well. So again, well within uh, the ballpark there. Uh, the IMI inspector, uh, when I uh, was measuring the uh, uh, potassium, it was a uh, getting the same 0.3 reading that it got before, but slightly elevated. Again, I'm, I'm rounding these to the nearest tenth. Uh, the background radiation that this was picking up was 0.25, and when I was uh, testing it on the potassium, it was getting 0.32. So slight elevation above the readings that it was getting previously, but still in that 0.3 uh, kind of uh, range, effectively saying that there's not really any huge difference. The duration of the measurements that I was using uh, when I was taking all these measurements was about a minute or two where I would kind of look at the numbers kind of roll and uh, and get an average of the, you know that that period of time the longer you take uh, a measurement uh, the more accurate your measurements your measurements going to be as it kind of averages over time I did these about a minute or two okay uh, last on the list 
was the better Geiger counter. <laughs> they, they put marketing right into the name of their company, didn't they? Uh, and this one was picking up uh, 0.1 for the uh, potassium. So essentially the same as background radiation again. Uh, you know, right in that kind of same ballpark, 0.1. Uh, so it wasn't really registering much uh, coming out of the potassium. Uh, a little bit because it was registering background at 0.06 and it was a solid 0.1 when it was measuring the potassium. So a little bit of a, a little bit of elevation, but but not very much at all. Okay, the next uh, thing that I was testing was uh, uranium, that little card with the uranium ore right on it. Uh, the Radex, uh, in that case, uh, had a reasonably elevated level. And at this point, I wanna mention that both this unit and this unit, I found, had a particular uh, way that they seem to be most effective at measuring radiation. Uh, for an, a unit like this, that has the open screen right in the back. When you're measuring something, you're putting it right in the back and, and, and pointing down like that. And the same uh, for this unit here. It has a uh, little symbol on the front and it says that the sensitive part is opposite the symbol right in the back. These units, uh, the instructions didn't note this at all, but I found these, un these units are different and I'm just gonna demo on this one so I don't have to hold both at the same time. Uh, if you take a sample and you put it right in the middle of the back of one of these, it would measure something there, but it wasn't until you tilted it up on the side and measured it on the side where it really started getting a lot of activity. And I'm wondering if, because these are scintillators, not Geiger counters, if there's some kind of directional nature of the way that uh, these measure things and energy coming from this direction versus this direction or this direction gets picked up better. But I found both uh, this unit and this unit both had that kind of feature where if I put things on the side, they were much more sensitive to it. So if you happen to get one of these units or a different unit, you may want to try uh, manipulate, manipulating them uh, in relation to whatever the sample is to do a better reading. Although for I think most of us, we are buying these things so that if we went into an entire environment where it's coming from everywhere, they're going to be measuring you know, from everywhere. And I guess in that case, you wouldn't really care the orientation. So anyway, getting back to the readings that I got using this Radex uh, Quarta, I got a reading of three, 3.0 uh, microsieverts per hour, which was uh, much more elevated beyond the uh, 0.1. Uh, that is uh, 30 times more intense than background radiation. So measuring uranium or it, it was 30 times more radiation than this was picking up just on background. And a reading of three um, is considered an elevated reading. You're not into the severe danger zone uh, at that point, but anywhere between one and 10 microsieverts uh, per hour is considered elevated. And yeah, you don't want to hang out in that environment too long. So the Radex picked up three, definitely an elevated radiation environment, and it effectively was able to notice that and tell me about it. Uh, next, the GQ GMC 500 Plus, which that's an awfully long name. Couldn't they just call it Jerry or something? So anyway, uh, this one uh, also had a reading of three, uh, which is again, 30 times above the background radiation that it was picking up earlier. So this one seemed to effectively tell me that the uranium was putting me into an elevated environment. Next on the list, the inspector. Now this was kind of an interesting reading that I got uh, from uh, this unit. If you recall, the background radiation from this unit was uh, just about 0.3. Uh, I'm gonna round it down to 0.2 for easier math in my head because the reading that this thing pumped out wasn't close to three, wasn't close to two, it was 22. 22 versus 0.25. So if I can do uh, the math in my head there roughly, um, I have to take a break here. <laughs> It's 100, right? It's 100. So this picked up a, an increase of 100 times more radiation coming out of the uranium ore card that I had than it was uh, receiving just from background radiation. So while the others were uh, mul being multiplied by 30, this one found that there was 100 times more radiation coming through than what it was picking up uh, you know, as compared to background. A reading of 22, is considered in the danger zone. Anything above 10 uh, microsieverts per hour is considered the danger zone. Though this is what gets into kind of some of the, um, the finer points of measuring radiation is that 
Microsieverts per hour is supposed to be a representation not only of how much radiation something is, uh, is emitting, but also the type of radiation that it's emitting. And it would seem that a lot of these units are kind of dumb because uh, the vast majority of the radiation coming out of that uranium ore was alpha and beta radiation. And it, being in an environment with alpha and beta radiation is nowhere near as dangerous as it is if you're in an environment with gamma radiation because gamma radiation can penetrate much more deeply through your body. There's much more energy associated with the gamma radiation. So uh, I felt that this reading was in some ways maybe a little bit misleading because uranium ore does not emit that much uh, gamma radiation you know, relative to the alpha and the beta. So if I was using this unit alone, and I was reading 22, I might really be freaking out, but having some of the other units and having a knowledge of the type of radiation that was actually being emitted from the source that I was reading would give me cause to you know, not really be freaking out that much. Of course, in an emergency, you're not going to know whether that's uranium ore or you know, something much more horrible that, you know, that's lying all on the ground around you. So you know, these things are tools, they give you some kind of information, but you know, it's not just, it's not a beginning and an end where, you know, it's just going to tell you safe or unsafe. There's a lot more, uh, there's a lot more to it, uh, you know, behind it in the background. And I think it's important to know that. And that's why I took about like 20 minutes to chit chat about that. So anyway, this one read 100 times over background radiation, registering the uranium ore. It had a reading of 22. Now here's where it gets kind of interesting. Remember that I mentioned that uranium ore is mostly emitting uh, alpha and beta radiation. This unit here is tuned, uh, at least according to their marketing, tuned for gamma radiation, because it, like I said earlier, gamma radiation is the really high energy radiation that penetrates through you and does the real uh, damage to your body. Uh, you know, the other ones can do damage if they get inside of you, but in terms of things on the outside, irradiating you from the outside uh, going in, uh, it's the gamma radiation you really have to worry about. This one's tuned for that, and it's tuned in a way to kind of ignore uh, uh, the alpha and the beta uh, a bit. And when I was testing this against the, uh, the uranium, I got a reading of 0.2, which is only double background radiation. So if you recall, these units here were 30 times above background radiation when I was testing them on uranium. Uh, this one here was 100 times above background radiation when I tested on uranium. This one's times two. So this one had nowhere near as many warning bells going off when I put it near the uranium. And I think some of that is by design because this one's intended to you know, pick up gamma radiation. I guess they have some shielding in here, which blocks out a lot of the alpha and beta. So you don't get that kind of uh, you know, false, false alarm kind of stuff where, you know, something that's not necessarily dangerous, it, you know, could potentially be terrifying you. But on the flip side, if you wanted to use this unit and test something to see if it was contaminated with alpha and beta radiation before you, I don't know, eat it, this is not going to really give you that information. So that's what it, uh, you get into the situation where, you know, maybe, you know, it's not one tool for all purposes. So that covers uranium. Uh, the last thing on the list is my little friend down in the hole there, uh, the radium, which I had to special order uh, because uh, it, it's kind of hard to find gamma ray emitting materials just in your local environment. And that's a, that's a good thing. I had a special order of that thing and it took a couple weeks for it to show up. Um, it's interesting that you can still kind of buy those things. When I, I found it online, I was like, can I can I order this thing? Um, and yes, you can. And it got sent to my house. And uh, what's crazy about it is I've got it hidden in that rock. People used to have those things right on their wrist. And, you know, there's these stories about, you know, um, it, primarily it was women that would paint uh, the uh, the radium tainted paint onto the watches and how uh, to get their, their paintbrush nice and sharp between painting. They'd wet it on their tongue and dip it in. And you can imagine what happened to those poor people who, you know, just took for granted that what they were being told to do in their work environment was safe and wouldn't hurt them. Didn't turn out that way. So that's the next item that we're going to be uh, testing through all of these. And let's start, as I have been, with the Radex. Uh, if you recall, background radiation with the Radex was 0.1. Uh, when I put this up to the the radium on the the watch hand, it was reading 5.7. Huge elevation. That's uh, 57 times more, I guess. Yeah, about 57 times more. So, you know, almost 60 times more radiation than background uh, this thing was picking up. Uh, 5.7 is definitely in the elevated range. So, uh, you know, if you were picking this up, 
with this unit, you would know this is not really a safe environment to be in. Uh, and this is kind of an important point uh, that I'm, I'm just going to uh, jump to as an aside. When I was doing these measurements, I was taking these uh, units and putting them right up uh, against this uh, sample in order to get as, you know, as much radiation as was coming out of it to go into the unit so I could register it. If you were in an environment and there were a couple of these uh, radium painted uh, watch hands scattered on the ground around you, the distance that uh, you're going to be from those kind of, uh, this is kind of overkill. We have got in, the, in this boulder here with a hole drilled in it. That's kind of overkill. If you just had some of these sprinkled on the ground around you, just the fact that you're kind of far away from them, the radiation levels are going to be much uh, diminished. So the idea that uh, if you were, were going to hold this unit and then have these radium watch hands scattered around you on the ground, this isn't going to be picking up any, uh, you know, 5.7, if that's a situation. If this is picking up 5.7, you know there is a lot of material around you. Because if you have one radium watch hand and it's thrown on the ground next to you, it's not going to emit much. If you have two, it's going to be twice as much that will be getting registered by this. Still, not very much. If you have four, that's twice as much again. Eight, that's twice as much again. 16, 32, 64, you can see where this is going. If you have a lot of this material scattered around you all over the place, it's going to cumulatively uh, aggregate into a much larger number. And those are the kind of environments that these guys are going to be uh, designed for. It's not that you're gonna be you know, down on the ground like shoving this down into the soil. Uh, what you're wanting to know is, is there's so much around me that even the area up here where I'm living, where I'm existing, is that bathed in radiation despite the distance that I have from all this dust on the ground. So 60 times above background radiation when I was testing radium. Next, uh, the Radex. This, uh, ha this picked up a reading of seven. So seven microsieverts per hour, definitely in that elevated range, getting pretty close to 10, uh, and 10 and above is considered the, the danger zone. So this is about 70 times above background radiation, testing the radium uh, watch hand is what this picked up. So I felt like this did its job. It's telling you that you were definitely in that elevated uh, zone, you know, getting towards the danger zone. Next on the list. <laughs> You probably won't be surprised to know that this picked up a lot more than 5.7. It picked up a lot more than 7. This picked up 60. So it was reading background radiation at just about 0.3. So you're going from 3 to about 600. I can do the math. Is that like 200? Is that right? 200? Yeah, it's like 200 times. About, about 200 times more than background radiation. So it went from... 0.3 to, uh, to 60.0, about 300 times, um, I'm sorry, 200 times, about 200 times more uh, radiation than background radiation. So this thing was definitely picking it up and it was definitely letting me know about it. And uh, again, uh, the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step back to this because this is important. 60 is more than 10. As you're well aware, 60 is more than 10. You don't, you don't need a, uh, a PhD in mathematics to know that. Uh, more than 10 is considered in the danger zone. What this thing was picking up is it was picking up all the gamma radiation, which was being emit emitted by the watch hand. And it was also picking up all that alpha and beta radiation. So this one was giving me a really, really high measurement because it's picking up all of them. And that really, really high measurement is giving me information but if I don't know that this is picking up a mix of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, and I don't know whether that's all gamma radiation, which would be very dangerous, or if it's all alpha and beta, which, you know, it's not great, but, you know, it's not going to be as bad as if it's gamma radiation. This is getting into those situations where you, you might have, uh, you know, a reading on your device, and it might seem terrifying, but it might be a situation where you might be taking it out of context. Because I wasn't getting 60 microsieverts per hour all of gamma. That's kind of a mix of gamma radiation and alpha and beta radiation. So, you know, getting a unit like this, I think it's going to be really prone to suggesting to you that you're in an environment that is much more dangerous than it actually is, unless you kind of understand what this thing is doing and what it's not doing. It actually, it's not what it's not doing. It's just that it, there, there aren't any things that this doesn't do. So it's, it's telling you about everything. It's giving you so much information that it could be kind of um, terrifying. It's kind of like uh, statistics about like uh, uh, shootings or something like that. If you find out that there are so many shootings per year, uh, you know, you, it, that statistic might sound terrifying to you. But if you divide it up among millions and millions and millions of people, you realize that, you know, statistically, you know, it's 
reasonably safe to go out and you're not going to get shot. But if you, you just listen to that kind of raw, cold number, it could give you a sense that that's a really big number. Uh, but out of context, it can be more terrifying than it, uh, than it should be. So moving on, uh, it's a little uh, bit of uh, philosophy mixed in with our uh, Geiger counter uh, uh, reviews here. Uh, last one on the list. Uh, this is our last uh, number uh, for our last uh, meter. For the better Geiger counter against the radium, I had a, a reading of one. One. This is 1.0 versus the 5.7, the, the 7.0, and the 60.0 of the other units. That might make it sound as though this unit is not working properly. And it, higher elevated levels beyond one, I can't say for sure because I, I don't have a million of those watch hands, nor do what I necessarily want to ha uh, you know, have that, uh, that many of them near me. Um, but I don't think that that number is necessarily a bad number because uh, if you remember, one, one to 10 is considered elevated. And this thing is tuned to measure just the gamma radiation. Uh, so this is telling me that in terms of gamma, gamma radiation, that watch hand is emitting gamma radiation that is itself getting it up into that elevated zone. So in a way, because I know that this one is not confusing me with the alpha and the beta radiation, and it's only telling me about the gamma, the fact that it's giving me a 1.0 makes me understand that that's 1.0 of gamma radiation. And I think that's useful to know. So while this did not return anywhere near uh, as high a number as you know any of the other units uh, were, uh, delivering to me because I know the type of radiation that this is measuring and I know that it's isolating just that. I think that that was a really useful number uh, that, it, that it gave me for that. So uh, what are my recommendations? Well, I've got a couple of recommendations. Um, I think if you really wanted to have a good sense of your environment and you wanted to have an ability to um, operate in different settings, and if you cross-pollinate that desire with the prepper notion that two is one and one is none, I would get two different Geiger counters. And if I were going to do that, I would get this because this is only measuring gamma radiation. And that is nice to have that isolated just in this one unit. Uh, inside this unit, it has a lot of um, different modes that you can go through. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go through all of them. This isn't a commercial for Better Geiger or anything like that. But there are a lot of functions built into this. It has a lot of different averaging functions. It has low uh, uh, low energy consumption uh, modes where you can go in and have the screen turned off. It functions on just one single uh, AA battery. I think that's uh, you know a nice feature for it. I like this as a unit that you would use to just tell you whether or not there is gamma radiation in the environment, and it's not going to give you false alarms because you know you're holding a banana and bananas have a lot of potassium, and it's reading the banana that you're that you're eating. This one is just tuned to guy, um, not Geiger. This is just tuned to gamma, and I think this would be a useful uh, unit to have in your arsenal. Now I mentioned two. In addition to this one. Can you guess which one I'm going to pull up next? Because if you want one unit that is for that raw, crude kind of how much gamma radiation is out there, what's the other function that I mentioned during this video? The other function is the ability to, like, to test something like if you're going to eat it. Like, is this food contaminated with alpha or beta? You want something that's really sensitive. Which of the units am I going to recommend for that? Well, it's this one right here. The, this is like that lab unit, the IMI inspector. Uh, it has a lot of different uh, settings and modes you can go into. Again, this isn't a uh, commercial for the IMI inspector. Uh, that said, links below to all of these. And if, if you do ever buy anything through my links, it doesn't cost you anymore, but it does, uh, it, fund, it helps to uh, support my channel. I always get like some tiny percentage of, of sales if you ever go through my links in the, um, in the bottom, at least the Amazon ones. Whenever I do a link to other things, I don't get any percentage. Um, but anyway, uh, like I was saying, this isn't a, a you know commercial for them. I'm just saying there are a lot of features in here. So I would suggest this and this unit. Now you buy these together, you know, it's getting pretty close to like a thousand dollars. And it gets into that kind of situation where, well, you know, yeah, like the, the extra thousand dollars that I burned a hole in my, in my wallet. You know, I know, uh, you know, that's a lot. If you were in a situation, a radi radiological emergency situation, would you wish that you would you know, spent that thousand dollars, you probably would. If you're never in a situation like that, would you be like, ah, why did I listen to Prax <laughs> dump a grand on these two units, which I've never used? You know, it could really go either way. And don't you honest to God hope that you 
you know, if you buy these units, you never have to use them. I know that's certainly the way that I feel about it. Uh, but that would be my, my recommendation. Whatever you do, I would suggest getting more than one of them. Uh, when I was uh, just turning uh, all these units on uh, to test again today, because uh, previously I tested them against everything except for that uh, uh, radium painted watch hand. It just uh, came in the mail today. Uh, so I, I turned them all back on to test on that. And when I turned this Radex on, it was screaming like it had, like just with background radiation, it was screaming like there were all these, um, you know, counts. I think it was just because it was cold. I'd had it in my fallout shelter and I brought it out. And maybe there was a little condensation on it. it had to like warm up and dry out. Uh, but, you know, it just reminded me that if you just bought one of these, and I'm not saying this is particularly prone to any kind of an error. It just, it reminded me of that situation. If you only had one of them, and like you turn it on and it's not functioning, you know, <laughs> two is one and, and one is none, especially when it's a situation where, you know, there's an invisible threat and you have no way of sensing it one way or another. So I hope you found this uh, review helpful. I know that it's a lot of money to dump on this kind of stuff. And if you are just getting into prepping and preparedness and you haven't done the basic things like get food, back, uh, you know, stored in a pantry or like, you know, your water stuff secured or all those other kind of like much more basic things. Don't go getting this kind of stuff. If like, you know, what's the point of knowing what there's radiation if you're going to starve first. So do the basic stuff, the basic cheap stuff, prepping, uh, you know, a lot of people that are new into prepping. They look at like these kind of things and they're like, Oh, you prepper, you're spending all this money. And you know, uh, like, uh, you know, not everyone's, you know, made of a million dollars, you know, neither am I. Uh, but I would highly recommend against getting any of this stuff if you haven't covered all your other bases. It's the same with like things like precious metals. Uh, you know, people are you know, always saying, oh, well, you know, why would you want to buy silver and gold? Uh, you know, that, that stuff's so expensive. You shouldn't. You shouldn't buy any of that stuff unless you have, you know, put back all like the basic stuff, you know, having food, having medicine, you know, you know critical medicines for yourself, uh, you know, all, all the basic things you need for life cover those bases first. And once you cover all that kind of stuff, then you kind of graduate to these kind of next level things where like, okay, well, I've covered that I'm not gonna starve to death. You know, what are some other things that I can, you know, put some investments into? Um, there's one other thing I wanna mention just in this video uh, that goes beyond any of these. It's another item that I haven't mentioned uh, at all in this video, but I think it would definitely be worth uh, taking a look at. And this is a specific unit, which, uh, you know, looks and is built a lot like this unit, uh, but it's one that Canadian Prepper has on his uh, website that he had a, uh, an engineer uh, kind of put together and uh, they created this device. And one thing that I keep, I just, keep holding this. One thing that his device, and I haven't tested it, but one thing that his device claims to be able to do beyond what this device can do is that it is tuned to uh, pick up gamma radiation, but you can uh, flip open a back panel on it and then it can also pick up alpha and beta radiation. And that would be a cool feature. If you were only going to get one unit, I would think that that unit might be the one to get if you were only going to get one. Uh, again, two is one and one is none when you're a prepper. But if you're just going to get one, I think that one would definitely be worth a look because uh, the ability to both get everything and then close up a panel and have it tuned just to alpha and beta radiation, uh, you know, that's something worth thinking about. Alternately, I suppose you could get this and then you could make kind of like a shroud around it, uh, you know, and it'll cover the back panel. Anyway, there's so, there's so many different options. I just wanted to share with you guys the numbers that I recorded uh, so that you can make a more informed decision if you're thinking about buying one of these things. And I think I've talked long enough. Thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another one that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people on the right-hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.